Okay, I had a student send me this uh, uh, linear programming problem. She was having problems setting it up. And I figured I would just show you how to set it up. This is basically how you set it up right here under given. So if you pause the video, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining this because it's pretty obvious. If you pause the video and look at this and look at what I have here in given, you'll see how to set it up. All right. Okay. And then normally when I do a problem, I like to state what we're given and then what we're going to find, which is asked what we are the last four sentences. And then I do my solution in a separate area. Like I say, I'm going to solve this the way that's um, a way that's a way uh, that's a little different than I normally show on YouTube. I'm just gonna so so we're gonna first we just want to guess, and I'm I'm just gonna use one because one's easier. So I'm gonna say, well, I think one for x, one for y, and one for z. That's that's what will minimize c. I'm just making a wild guess and I'm using one. I'll show you why and that makes sense in a second. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go equals this and drag that down. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what C would be if I put ones in for this. So I'm going to go, and the best way to do is a, a function called sum product. So I'm going to go equal sum product. And I'm going to take these ones. Basically, I'm going to take one times this plus one times this plus one times this. And some product is very good for that. The only thing is I'm going to, I'm going to copy this formula down. I kind of know what I'm going to do already. So I'm going to hit F4 and that puts dollar signs in front of uh, B15, H1. And that, that makes it something called an absolute ref reference. So when I copy this formula down, it will not move down. And I'm going to take each one of these ones times these, 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 you know, one time, remember one is in for X, one is for Y, one is for Z. So one times 18, one times 23 plus one times 10, and I get 51. So if I sum these up, it's the same thing as summing these up, right? If there's one, if we look down here and there's some, I have 51, so that's right. So then I can just drag this down. And now this is why this is really cool, because now it stayed on these ones, but it went down to the next one. And, uh, for that, we got 53, and if I sum these, it's 53, and of course, 16 is 9 plus 7, so those all came out correctly, so we were able to calculate that. So if I change this to 2, of course, those numbers are going to change. If I change that to 2, those numbers are going to change. Now, uh, I'm going to go Control-Z to go back to 1, and now I'm going to put the, these two things in here, and the easiest way to do is I'm just going to go equals this, and then since it's all relative, I can copy it down and then copy it over and so those are just referencing that right there so we know so we know that 53 is not greater than 56 so i'm not satisfying constraint one or i'm not satisfying constraint two like i said i could just guess these but the nice thing is we can make excel do this and we can use something called solver so i'm going to go here to data and if you don't know if you don't have solver here you can you can you can get on youtube Ask how to turn on solver. It's built into Excel. You don't have to pay for anything. It's already built in. You just have to turn it on. So I'm going to click on solver. And I'm going to just go, go ahead and reset all because I already had a problem in here. Okay, so first thing we want to do is this is my constraint that I calculated right here. So I'm going to click on that and I want to minimize that. And how do I want to minimize that? By guessing different numbers in here. And you look like this is like a combination lock, right? We're guessing these to minimize that. And the same time, now we have to add these constraints. So I'm going to go add. And the nice thing, since these are both the same direction, I could do them both at once. I can highlight these two. And I'm changing this to greater than or equal to these two. And I can go OK. Now I have those constraints. This check mark here just makes sure that the X, Y, and Z are all positive. So you can do that. And I'm going to change this to, uh, it should be linear, simplex linear programming. Because these, these are linear these, these, these equations are linear. They don't have any X squared, Y squared, or Z squared, or anything unusual like that. You know, and it's a straight multiplication. So those are basically called linear, linear equations, right? So we can use that. And then if I go, and I'm going to go solve, and you can watch, Excel is going to change these until it minimizes this. So I'm going to go solve. I'm going to accept my solution. You can see that this is what I got for the answer. Okay, and then this is the answer to the third question. So the minimum value is 160. 
zero for y, x zero for y, 16 for z. These are, this one is exactly 112, so that's satisfied, it's equal to. This one's greater than that, and that's it. We just use solver to solve it. Hopefully that was very intuitive, very simple to set up, um, and hopefully that answered any of your questions. If you like this video, my picture will pop up. You can click on my picture, and it'll subscribe you to my channel if you want to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment if you liked it. Thanks for watching. Bye.